Hello, everybody. Looks like we're about to get some company, and I thought you might want to see. We have deer, we have doves, we have a pileated woodpecker, we have blue jays, squirrels, you name it, any kind of bird. I think I've seen, I couldn't even count how many different types of birds I've seen. But the deer are coming up. I've been outside for two days doing yard work yesterday and today. And I have gotten a whole lot done. I avoided the backyard today. I did the, the backyard the first day and I swelled up, had hives real bad and had a bad allergic reaction. I don't know what it is about out there where the deer hang out, but I stirred up a lot of dust with the leaf blower, a whole lot of dust, and the wind blew it back at me. So it could have been something as simple as just dust. But anyways, to avoid any of that happening again today, I worked in other areas around the house. I didn't have any problems. So, I've been I'm kind of avoiding this video, to be honest with you. I've been thinking about this video yesterday and today. I really didn't want to come on here and talk about, honestly, anything that is happening now. Last night, yesterday, I mean, honestly, None of it is about summer. It's all about Candace, Ernie, and BK. And I'm sick of it, y'all. I'm sick of it. And, I mean, I can't help it. I'm human, okay? Y'all forgive me, please, for being human and, and feeling sorry for somebody who says that they're laying, somebody who's laying on the ground beside of a river, vomiting their guts out. That was clear. She was very sick. There's a man there with her that can see her, and he states to her clearly, Candace, you need to go to the hospital. Candace, you need to go to the hospital. Okay, Ernie, why didn't you call 911? It did sound like she needed medical attention very, very clearly through just hearing audio. And I'm sure that if you had a visual effect of that along with audio, he was up front and center. He knew she needed medical attention. He didn't even call 911. He left her laying by the cold river, throwing her guts up. Regardless of how she got there or why she was there, somebody needed to get her off of the riverbank. And he was the only one there, to my knowledge. And I say shame on Ernie. And I'm sorry, y'all. That's the way I see it. And I think shame on Candace. She's playing both sides of the fence with Ernie and with BK. She is obviously very much very much still in in love with BK. And I think what she really misses about BK that she didn't have with Ernie is a sense of security. I think that BK made Candace feel safe. I've heard her say before that he protected me. He really did. He protected me. I've heard her say that, talking about BK. I think it's, she probably hasn't felt safe for years. And all of a sudden, BK comes into their life and she feels like he protects her. He becomes her safety net. And then 
something happens between them, and then she gets Ernie pops in over there, and it was clear that Candace was not romantically in love with Ernie like she was BK. She was playing, she's been playing BK and Ernie against each other all along, I believe that. I think she still is playing one against the other, trying to make BK jealous. And I don't know why she would think that BK would get jealous. I really don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think BK's in love with her at all. I don't think he ever was. I never thought he had any intentions of having any romantic involvement with Candace. And I think that was something that was all in Candace's head. And that's what I think. I could be wrong. He could have played her and I could be completely wrong. But I don't trust either one of them right now. There's a reward out for summer. People will go to great lengths for money. I mean, it's sad, but there's no boundaries for some people when it comes to money. And if it's about money, like I think it is, with probably both cases, I mean, some people call it a love triangle. I don't, I don't see any love. The only love I saw was a big crush that Candace had on BK. And I think her heart was completely crushed in whatever they fell out about. I don't know because I don't follow BK's channel. I don't follow Ernie's channel. And yes, I do follow, I'm subscribed to Candace's because I want to see if she's ever going to get on there and talk about Summer or the boys. That's who I'm interested in. The kids. I wish Candace would stop with all these men and all this going to the river and whatever that was all about. It don't need to happen anymore. She needs to straighten herself up. She needs to take her butt home, keep her butt at home, and find her daughter and get her kids back or at least work on trying to get your kids back. I don't believe there's a chance, not one single chance, that she'll ever get those boys back ever. And if Summer's ever found, she will not get her back either. I hope she never gets to lay eyes on them again. I have cared way more about those kids than she has this whole entire time. I could not dare be romantically involved in another man, much less two. Not counting a husband while my child is missing. It's not right, y'all. It's not right. And yes, I'm aware that there's a rumor going around that Rose Bly is alive. And I'm sorry to be the one, if I'm the one telling you, that no, that's not true. Rose Bly is not alive. Rose Bly has not been found. Rose Marie Bly is still missing to this day. That was said to be her cousin. And she's done this before. So her name is Julie Letts. It is not Rose Bly. So please, let's put that rumor to bed. I remember that rumor going around earlier in this case. And it was put to rest. And somehow it has resurfaced. And I'm going to tell you, I know for a fact, I've seen the evidence that is not Rose. And that's all I have to say about it.
Tiffany Marie had a good video today. Well, I don't know what day it was recorded. I think it was today. Today was the day I saw it. She popped up in my feed, my queue this evening. And she had some pictures of the boys on there. And I thought that was a, a really good video she did. It was a nice video. I saw some good pictures of the boys that I hadn't seen before. And it was nice to see that. To see them looking so happy through such hardship. I hope they're still looking just as happy as they did in those photos. That's what I want to keep in my mind when I think about the boys from now on. I'm going to think of those pictures I saw on Tiffany Marie's page, channel. And I'm going to remember those smiles on those boys' faces, how happy they were. And... I'm going to picture them being 10 times happier than that. Where they are right now. And I'm, I am sure that they are. I'm no doubt about it. And I hope nobody takes that away from them. Hubby is approaching... When the birds fly off like that, yep, here he comes around the house, putting out some deer corn. They're a little bit spoiled. <laughs> I waved at hubby and he waved back, but y'all couldn't see him. He was out of frame. Trying to lower it so you can see better. I didn't know whether I should come on here and talk about all this mess or not, but try, because I try so hard to not talk about BK or not talk about Ernie, I don't want to talk about neither one of them on my channel. This is not about them, it's about summer and i want to stay focused on summer i want to find justice for summer i want to see somebody be held accountable for summer being gone whatever happened to summer and if anything happens to candies we will never find out what she knew somebody needs to be doing a welfare check or something to make sure that Candace is alive and well, because I haven't heard that she's alive. She sounded like she was dying in that video I heard. Cold Cases with Colette did a really good video, and she had the audio there of, it's, it's horrible, y'all. I don't recommend that you go see it, but, if you want to hear what I'm talking about, this, how bad she sounded, you can hear that on Cold Cases with Colette. And it did sound like she was severely ill and she needs to be, she needs to be under medical attention, I thought. It sounded really bad and it sounded very serious. So, I don't know, you know, she's a prankster. It could be that situation like the little boy who cried wolf. Maybe this time she was really in danger and nobody believed her because she's cried wolf too many times. She has been quite the prankster in this case with what she did with Mary. Nobody's going to forget about that. That's not going away. Everybody is aware of how good she can prank people. So I'm always keeping that in mind. There's so much nonsense going on in this case that bothers me. It makes me not want to do videos. It makes me not want to talk about anything that's going on because none of it, it seems like none of it has to do with summer anymore. 
It seems to me like BK and Ernie have stolen, and Candace have stolen the spotlight from Summer. It's not about them. And why does anybody even care about them? And where did they even come from? I mean, Benny and Ernie, to my knowledge, just came out of nowhere. It's not like these are family members or lifelong friends of the family. These are just two YouTubers trying to collect a reward. And she's falling in love with one and allowing the other one, trusting him to stay in her home. I would not be able to go to sleep with that man in my house. You know, he's searching everything and everywhere. If she does have any evidence around there, I hope he does find it. I don't care who finds it. I want it found. But she shouldn't have anybody staying up at that house. She shouldn't even be having these YouTube guys up there. She's in a high-profile case, and she is very high-risk. She needs to stop all of these bad decisions and poor behavior. And she needs to stop stealing the spotlight and stop all the deflection, trying to make everybody talk about other things, anything besides summer. I'm going to still talk about Summer, even if I have to sit here and say her name over and over and over for 30 minutes. There's my Summer video. If I just sat and said Summer Wells is still missing, please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Summer Wells is still missing. Please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. I can raise awareness by just doing that, just that alone. And somebody who don't know Summer Wells might just happen to call it and see what's going on and learn something. I try my best to, to raise awareness about Summer and bring to you content, the latest content about summer but for a long time now it's been really hard to bring to you information about content about summer because she's been overshadowed she's been overshadowed by candace just like always and now she's being overshadowed by the men in Candace's life as well, along with her shadow. We cannot let that happen, because if we keep allowing that to happen, the attention will be taken off of Summer, and then that means that this case would be likely to go cold. If everybody stopped paying attention to Summer Wells, her case could go cold. Everybody needs to bring their focus back to Summer Wells and the fact that she is still missing and that this is all about Summer Wells and has nothing to do with anybody else. We need to find out where is Summer and who is accountable who is responsible for Summer being gone? What happened to Summer? Where is she? And who can we hold accountable? We need those answers. And Candace just wants to dance around those answers. Throw deflection all up in your face. And anybody that dares to venture over into the dark alleys of the dark side of the YouTube streets to bring back any information from over there back to their people so that their people, their friends, don't have to go over there and be exposed to it. 
Then they come knocking on your new, your YouTube door. Can I come up on panel? Will you let me up on panel? Just so they could come up and attack me. I know what they was trying to come up for to attack me. I've seen what happens to people when BK's mad at them. He is very destructive. And I know why he was coming for me. Because I went over there one time and I came back and I reported what I heard over there. And he came for me. If that was even really him. I have some people in my chat that said it wasn't even him. But he visited my chat three different times. Whoever this Benny character is that claimed to be Benny Keys. And just because on the third time I threw out a link and was going to let him come up and say what the hell he wanted to say. Because I was tired of it. I wanted to just hear what he wanted to say. And because of that, some people got mad at me and want to say that I'm following the wrong creators. I ain't following Benny Keys. I never have followed Benny Keys. I never have followed Ernie, so I don't know what you're talking about. Apparently, you have not been following my videos, or I wouldn't even have to tell you that. Don't tell me that I've been following the wrong creators because you don't know who I follow. Just because somebody came wanting up on my panel does not mean that I follow them. And just because I pop in on one live stream does not make me a follower of them. And I went over there that one time, came back, reported what I had heard, and never went back. Don't want to go back. Didn't want to go to the time I went. I didn't want to go. Anyways. As far as the notifications, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if people have them turned off for a reason. Probably so. I've did everything I can to fix the problem. And that's all I can do. And it's up to you to check your notifications on your end. And maybe report to Google if you have a problem and your notifications are not working. I had one person pop up in my comments and tell me that maybe it's because I'm following the wrong creators. Is that what it is? Did you did you click the, the bell, the unfollow bell? To where you couldn't get no notifications because you felt like I was following the wrong creators. I'm not following the wrong creators. I'm not following Benny Keys. I'm not following Ernie Shell. But if I hear that Candace is over there on a panel, I'm going over there and see what she see what kind of condition she's in. I go I pop in places. If I know she's somewhere, somebody tells me she's somewhere on a panel, I go over there and I gauge to see if I think she's intoxicated to see, because I heard a rumor she was trying to quit drinking. So if I heard that she showed up on a panel somewhere, I was showing up so I could see if she looked like she was drinking, and she did. I don't think I've seen one video yet of her looking sober. And I never stay in any of those live streams. I always go and check her out, see, listen to the way she's talking, look at the way she looks, watch her demeanor for a few minutes. I gauge how bad a condition she's in at that time. And that's all I care about. And I leave. And you know they're not talking about summer. They never talk about summer over there. Anywhere Candace is, they don't talk about summer. And in some places, it's even a rule that you can't talk about summer. You get blocked in the chat. I've heard about it. I've heard about people getting blocked in the chat for mentioning Summer's name in the chat. Because they were told not to mention Summer's name. 
Who would want to go to a chat like that? Who would want to go there? If that really cares about Summer, who would want to go over there where you can't even say her name? I don't get it. There's so much going on. It's turned into drama. It's turned into Candace laying beside the river puking, and that's what we get to hear for the night. Really. What about Summer? Candace needs to wake her butt up, and she needs to sober up. I am so mad with this woman right now. It's a good thing that we are states apart. I am very angry at her. Shame on her for allowing herself to be in the position that she was in last night, puking her guts out on the side of a riverbank instead of being at home, sitting her butt in front of that platform of hers on YouTube pleading to the said of doctors to bring her child back because she knows that no said of doctor exists. She knows that there's nobody to beg to bring her child back. What is it? Karma kicking her butt out there on the side of the river? Is that part of her karma? I knew karma was coming for her. Everybody's karma is different. Losing one child is enough karma for me. I mean, if I had lost a child like she did by losing Summer, I mean, that would have been enough to break me as a person. You could forget dating. You could forget fishing, all that stuff. I mean, she has not been found. This woman went on with her life early, early, like immediately afterwards. She went on with her life, and she expected us to do the same thing, and so did Dawn. I don't know what's going on out there, but everything ran. The birds, the deer, the squirrels, everything ran. And the last time that happened, the bear showed up. Well, that's wild. I don't know, y'all. I just know that I'm really disappointed in her and the choices that she's making. And where is Grandis? Does Grandis even know what condition Candace is in right now? Does she even know about all these bad decisions that she's making? I mean, it seems like she could take her to a doctor and get her medically evaluated and get her checked in somewhere where she can get some real medical help. Candace does not need to be laying down on a riverbank somewhere, puking her guts out. Who knows if she was going to die or not. She could have been overdosed. We don't know. Could have been overdose, could have been stroke, could have been a number of things. And Ernie just, what, left her there? What does that say about him? And th the fact that he told her to burp it out, really bur burp it out, Ernie, really? Yeah, there's a solution. A woman laying on a riverbank looking like she's about to die, I'm sure, and he gonna tell her to burp it out. Anyways, that's all I have for y'all. I'm sorry, but that's the kind of content they give us to talk about. It's not the creator's fault 
that we're reporting on such negativity. That's all we get from the parents. If they was giving us anything positive to bring to you, trust me, we would be. We would be bringing you good news, good positive vibes every day. But that's not what they're giving us to bring to you. It's shameful, I know. It's shameful. Hopefully, it won't be much longer, y'all. I don't know how long I can hang in here. I, I just don't know anymore. I mean, people judge you just because somebody wants to come up on your panel. I'm not letting anybody back up on my panel, so there's that. That fixes that problem. It's not happening anymore. Me and hubby will be the only ones on my panel. I'm all about my chat anyway. I love my chat. I miss my chat. I miss you all a lot. I really do. And I still laugh at some of the things y'all say in the chat. And I love the fact that y'all can make me laugh and make me smile. And I just love the time that we spend together. And I'm looking so forward to Friday and it might be 3 o'clock. I've been saying 2.30, but we're going to make it a scheduled event, and I believe it's going to be 3 o'clock because we were a bit rushed, and we tried to schedule things to where we're ahead of the schedule and not rushed. So I think if we do it at 3 o'clock, things would run a lot more smoother on our end. According to my schedule, his schedule, and that schedule, <laughs> it seems like 3 o'clock on Friday might be better. And possibly, depending on how many people we have, will depend on how long we go. The more people we have in the chat, the longer we'll chat. I love sitting there and chatting with y'all and interacting with y'all and getting to know y'all. I enjoy it. I enjoy hearing what y'all think about what's going on, what you what your theories are, what you think. I mean, it's a place where you can come and voice your opinion and and you won't be put in time out. I mean, this is a place where you can come and if you don't act like an adult and you're being disrespectful, would you just get blocked? There is no time out. You're either in or you're out. And you have to be a responsible adult here because I have like a zero toleration for any BS. Like the person who commented that it's probably due to the, the creators that I follow. All I can say is you're wrong. You're wrong, and if the shoe was on the other foot, I would have never said that to you. I would have never written that on one of your videos as a comment. That was rude. It was mean. It was unnecessary, and I wouldn't have never done that to you. But it doesn't really bother me now. It did at the mo for a moment. But it don't bother me now because now I see. I just see something that I hadn't that I didn't see before. That's all I'm gonna say. And it's my business what creators I follow, and nobody knows who I follow. You might know of uh, two or three that I've told you that I follow, but if I didn't tell you I follow somebody, you don't know it, do you? That's just like that lady that said that to me. She has no idea that I do not even follow those people. None of them. There's only very few people that I follow because I've learned along the way a thing or two. Anyways. I'm looking forward to Friday. 
3 o'clock and it will be scheduled and hopefully we can all meet up we can all have a a wonderful fun light-hearted conversation keeping summer in the spotlight and trying to make sense out of a whole lot of mess as best we can like we always do anyways i look forward to it y'all friday three o'clock if you can't be there maybe you can catch it on the replay leave some hearts candles for summer it would be a wonderful idea, just a wonderful thing for everybody to do. I mean, even on this one, hearts and candles, our love and our hope for justice for this little girl and for them boys, our love and our hope for summer to be found and for somebody to be held accountable. And we're gonna keep them candles burning and keep them candles going and we're not gonna let this case go cold. As long as the public stays focused on this little girl, this case will not go cold. It's when the public eye begins to shift and focus on other things that's when a case tends to go cold. When the public is no longer putting any pressure on law enforcement on a particular case, I feel like things move better when they, when they know that the majority is watching. This case has national attention. People from all over the world are watching. And I do have confidence that somebody will be held accountable in this case. And I know it's hard to have patience. It's hard to have faith. It's hard to know who to trust anymore. There's bad guys out there on the YouTube streets, just like there's bad guys out here on the real streets. And you just have to know who to trust and who not to trust. And it's hard to get to know that. That's why this is a place where you can come and send me to the dark side. I've done it for people. By request, come back and reported what I saw. And then they came for me. <laughs> and they came for me for it. But it scared me a little bit because I knew they was come, coming for me to attack me. But I still threw that link out there. And I think that shows bravery, if anything else. It shows bravery. It don't show that I'm a follower of that person by no means. Because I'm not. And I wasn't then. I threw that link out there and took the chance of this man coming up there and chewing my ass up. And then being out to destroy my channel. I know the risk. I know what's involved. The risk involved. I did it at, by request to bring back information from my friends. So that they didn't have to go and be exposed to some stuff and hear things. I'm the creator so I should go out and do those things. And come back and report to you what you want to hear. And I don't want to ever go back to the dark side ever again. But if anybody ever had a special request for me to go check something out, I probably would do it again. But I'm not going to throw a link out there for them to give them an invitation 
to come up on my channel and, and blast me. That's not going to happen anymore. I, I got tired of them trying to come up on panel. I wanted to hear what they had to say. Let them go ahead and get it out of their system and then leave me alone about it. It had nothing to do with following the person. Anyways, my yard's looking beautiful. Not that back there. It's all dusty and stuff. That's the wildlife yard. But my yard yard is looking good. I've gotten a lot of stuff done. I've gotten a whole lot of spring cleaning done. I have redone my sunroom. And I plan to do a video about that and show y'all what I've done to my sunroom. And now I've, I've been working on the yard. And then in the evenings, I've been working on the kitchen. Uh, I started with the shelves. And next thing you know, I've been all, almost all the way around the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just getting rid of tons of stuff and storing away stuff in the basement. I don't like to have clutter. Anyways, I've been staying busy, but I have been listening to videos as I work. I've been staying updated on Summer's case as much as possible so that I won't be lost in the chat when I'm sitting there Friday talking to y'all. Hubby has a nice surprise for y'all Friday. You do not want to miss this Friday's live. Hubby has been working on something for y'all. And he will be on panel. It will not be just his voice. He will be on panel. He has something to say. And I think y'all should be there for that. I think it's very nice of him to go through the trouble that he has to present this to y'all. And he has gotten to know a lot of y'all too. And he cares a lot about y'all too. It's not just me. We both care a lot about y'all. Y'all are my channel. Y'all are my friends. Y'all love my, my wildlife and he loves the wildlife. So we all have that in common, and we all have summer in common. We all want what's best for the boys, and we just have to, we can't do anything else for the boys. All we can do is pray for them and have faith that everything is going smoothly for them, and I think it is. And pray for justice for summer. Throw up those candles and some hearts for baby girl. And let's just remember her today that this is about Summer Wells. She is still missing and it's been now over 10 months. And law enforcement is still today telling, well, not today, technically, but last we heard from law enforcement is that they are no closer today in solving this case than they was on the day that she disappeared. And that is some very disappointing news. I'm starting to wonder if they might need to let some other agencies come in and get involved with some fresh eyes to look at this case and see who they may have missed, what they might might have missed. But I don't know, y'all. But Friday is going to be good. Friday is going to be a good live. Hubby will be on panel for the first part. And then I will have my chat time with y'all that I look so forward to. Don't worry, we will have that. And we'll go over just a few other little things. And so 
I look forward to seeing everybody Friday at 3 o'clock. Thank you for watching.